just for everybody watching, what's the best thing to do? Stop putting all your business online. Take your big three out your bio. <laughs> <laughs> When somebody knows your big three, they can read your entire birth chart if they know astrology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling people energy and affirmations that goes into these crystals is amazing. I can feel the energy when the package was here. The packaging was good, and you can feel the power in these soon. They have crystals. They have real, real crystals. I don't even know how to explain it, but it was pressure, pressure. Just love it. I love it. <laughs> Everything legit, you know. This is not just a person who's just selling these herbs and crystals just to look good. You can actually feel the intentions within these crystals. The name is Beyond 5D. You're gonna feel Beyond 5D. I'm a believer, receiver. My goal is my girl and it's cheaper to keep this a year ago. Something like that. Still got it. Still in great condition. Website. Had them sooner than they told me it was going to be. And I ordered it. I got it literally in like three days. When I was told it was supposed to come within five to six days. They'll throw you free ones, you know what I'm saying, and discounts. It's legit. 100, 100% legit. Really good people. Research on it. I've seen a lot of people say it. It is the real deal. It's the real deal. I love the way I feel. Plus, I it's like that, man. Y'all can hear it. I mean, tap in with Beyond Fat. This is helpful all the way. Thank you to Beyond 5D because these are amazing. Receiver. My goal is my girl and it's cheaper to keep her My glow in this world is unique like my features I know I'm the world on the street with the sweeper skirt Alright, so we are now live We have ourselves Tamisha Monette She is a shamanic astrologer She's one of the best in the world We also are going to be doing another episode of the 5D Family And today we're going to be discussing Pluto retrograde in Aquarius Alright, so you know, we are in a period of 2024 Which is the 8th universal year and, you know, a lot of you guys are going through, you know, your personal years, you know, numerology. Uh, but understanding what's going on with the conscious community during this year is very, very imperative to know. We have ourselves a special guest, Tamisha Mane. So let you take over. Okay. So right now we are going to experience Pluto. And it's going to stay in Aquarius for a little over 23 years. And so it's been a long time. Since it was in Aquarius, 200 and something plus years. And last time it was in Aquarius, we saw things like the Haitian Revolt, the French Revolt. Um, we saw a lot of different revolutions take place. Reason being, Pluto can be death, chaos, destruction. Mm -hmm. But it can really be like rebirth and alchemy and power and wealth. It's just about how you are distributing your power when you are utilizing Pluto's energy. And so being that Aquarius is a fixed air sign that is the collective, it's collective consciousness, it's society, it's groups, it's organizations, it's friendships. We're going to see a lot of changes within these areas. Yeah, so what's some of the things we have been seeing so far? Like, we've been seeing a lot of people get shot at in the conscious community. We've been seeing people, you know, grow the conscious, grow their pages, people fall off. Um, there's a lot of transformation. I've been also seeing a lot of uh, friend groups change. We've been seeing people just not even really want to stay in the community no more. Uh, people are I also see a lot of, like, you know, Aquariuses are known to be like, you know, the rebel without a cause. I see a lot of people not wanting to identify as being spiritual no more people don't want to be spiritual no more or at least they don't want the label they're like nah i'm not spiritual i'm not conscious i just want to be me <laughs> so we see a lot of like breaking from labels and even me myself i've you know been a victim of this like i don't like no label i don't like oh spiritual now nah, this is me bro. like you know and that that really helps with identity it really feels like because some of us been indoctrinated when we was younger where we was tied down to a system we was tied down to a this this that we have to be 
oh my god like so now we're like in this conscious community we just want to be ourselves so what do you have to say about the current news of the Pluto affecting the conscious community so essentially either you can handle in bo boiling hot water or you can't okay so Pluto is always originally Scorpio's planet so that's boiling hot water either you can handle these third degree burns or you can't so the who I got out the kitchen essentially like because there's also Saturn retrograde in Pisces. So Saturn being restriction, limitation, hardship, karma, authority, leadership, parental energy, and it's appearing to orbit backwards in Pisces, the zodiac sign of emotion, psychic energy, spirituality. Um, a lot of people, you will see them, I won't say running back to the church per se. I don't want to sound negative but they're backing away from being in the spiritual space if they did not have any business being there in the first place if they were in it just to make money if they were in it just to scam if they were in it just for the aesthetic because you know Saturn is going to put you to the test so mm -hmm. you know are you you saying you're a high priestess you're saying you're empress but when we put you through the tests, the trials and tribulations that people who have these titles actually have to endure, can you handle it? And what we've been seeing is a lot of people have not been able to sustain what comes with it. The challenge, mm -hmm. you know, people always forget that spirituality is just on a spectrum. So it's dualistic. Like there's going to be negative attributes to spirituality. It's going to be pain points and trauma and tragedy because a lot of the times that's what invoke people to even start trying to clean up the mess and get right within their spiritual outlook, their lens, their higher consciousness with God in the first place. Yeah. I would say too, with the, with the violence aspect, Pluto can be violent. So I'm not surprised to see the violence in the spiritual community. I believe it's twofold. I believe some people are being silenced. Okay, and they don't want people to have like their messages out and wakening the collective and helping them evolve because Pluto does evolution into a state of power. Okay, where the power is shifting over from you know Capricorn, where it's the government, mm -hmm. with the you know authority figures, and it's switching over to the society itself, the mm -hmm. actual people. So I think some people in the spiritual community are being um, silenced. Then you also have the aspect of, you know, people in the spiritual community who literally bring colonized mindsets in these spaces. So then they may just be trying to harm another healer just on the strength of why is it them and not me. Right. So what do you for all the people watching and they have friend groups, what do you recommend for them to do with their friends if they feel like they don't, you know, uh if they're not really watching their back, right? What do you feel like is the best move to do right now for people with a lot of friends during this pool to retrograde? Ooh, quality, not quantity. Mm -hmm. So the quality of the friendship versus having a bunch of friends is going to be key right now, mm -hmm. as well as any friends that were formed around any type of trauma bonds are going to dissipate. If Ooh. there is no evolution, if there is no progress, if there's no elevation, you know, a negative and a positive cannot occupy the same space. One of them will cancel off the other. So if you find yourself drifting apart from people who are not doing their work, who do not have anything to lose, who are not, you know, willing to put in the blood, sweat, tears, and equity required to obtain the things that they were put here to destiny to keep, then so be it. Right. You know, make a room like, for people that kind of match your vibe instead. Yeah. So at the end of this Pluto retrograde, how do you feel like it's going to be in the conscious community? Like, do you feel like everybody's just going to be completely different or you feel like it's going to fall apart? What do you feel like Pluto's going to really do? Pluto is destruction before it's anything else. It is rebirth. You know, it is power. It's alchemy and all of that. But Pluto is essentially chaos and destruction first and foremost. So whatever was built on a faulty foundation Whatever was built on fallacies and, you know, fraudulence, it, that's going to crash and burn and be done away with. Um, so some people will have, like, it'll be like a wool pull off of their eyes. Um, some people feel like the rug is going to be snatched from underneath them. But I will say, like, if you don't have the fortitude to build up the sovereignty within yourself, because Aquarius is co-ruled by Uranus, 
but it's also ruled by Saturn traditionally. So mm -hmm. Saturn is going to level you up whether you want to or not. So if people are not willing to do the work required to parent themselves, govern themselves, lead themselves, mm -hmm. eventually they just going to get left behind and there's only going to be a few quality people that's leading the cause and the initiative. Mm. So how do we discern for all the viewers watching, Tamisha, how do people discern the truth between a real high profile leader in the conscious community and a and a basically, you know, a false prophet? You know them by their fruits. So do you see them being spiritual and then two minutes later they like I'm not going to say don't use your throat chakra, okay? It's healthy. You don't want no throat blockage. But, like, are they cussing people out every day? Are they arguing with people online every day? Are you hearing negative things about them every day? Now, there's balance and there's duality, right? Very spiritual concept. It's a universal law. But if you find, like, it's more negative or if you're tuning into this person and you now feel drained. You feel tired. Um, you feel at a loss. You're at a deficit. The more you like entertain their vibration or their frequency, then that's a sign that they are pretty much a false prophet. Mm. Mm. Yeah, this, this Pluto retrograde, it's been bringing a lot of, because Pluto was power. So yeah. I have noticed a lot of, you know, people been developing their personal power. Um, this, is, yeah. you know, I, I really do feel like Pluto is a malefic planet. Like a lot of astrologers do. Like it's one of those, you know, you go through the shits when you're dealing with a lot of like Scorpio energy or Pluto. Um, what's your thoughts on, on, do you feel like Pluto is the worst planet? No. And that's only because I'm a Plutonian. Like I got a lot of Pluto in my chart and stuff. Pluto is what you make it. So, if you have tumultuous circumstances, are you willing to turn this shit into gold? Are you willing to alchemize it? Are you willing to work with what you have um, to get more? And that's all Pluto is. Like, okay, something bad happened. Now, what you going to do about it? What are you made of? What changes are you going to make? You know, are you going to protect yourself? Are you going to change up your routine? Are you going to change up how you speak and who you're around? Are you going to be mindful of who you bring into your space and who energy is a match and whose energy is aligned? That's Pluto. Pluto gets a bad rep. So does Saturn because these planets are planets that require people to do the work that they don't want to do. Mm -hmm. I've heard like people with Pluto energy in their natal chart. I've heard that when Pluto has an effect on you, you're supposed to let it like do its thing. You're not supposed to try to control Pluto. You can't. It's like, yeah, you, you can't. Oh, you can't. Okay. So I heard like, yeah, like, okay, you know how they say if it's out of your control, it's out of your control. That's like Pluto. Yeah, no. With Pluto, what you can do is let Pluto level you up, power you up. That's all it's there to do. Like, Saturn and Pluto don't care about your, like, sob stories and what happened to you. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, wipe them tears. Roll up your sleeves. Let's go get some dirt on on them cleats, some dirt on your jersey. Let's go get in the field. Let's go do some work. That's Saturn. That's Pluto. Now, Pluto's doing it on a more emotional, mm. subconscious level, as where Saturn is putting you to literal work. Wow. Yeah, I remember the last time we've uh we worked together, we was doing a Scorpio video. We were talking about how you was saying how Scorpio moons is like the uh, Scorpio risings and Scorpio moons are some of the toughest placements in astrology. Absolutely. The fact that Scorpio deals with the underworld, it deals with darkness, it deals with you know, so you're dealing with people who are you know dealing with darker energies naturally, and you know, darkness isn't always bad. These are people who other people shit too yeah so a lot of the times with these scorpio placements we're dealing with other people's shit so the stuff that other people refuse to accept the mirror they won't hold up to themselves um and that's where it becomes intense because normally people can walk around with their you know their pain their trauma their baggage um their fuck shit and they can hide it in plain sight right mm -hmm. 
But if they are interacting with someone that has eight house placement, Scorpio placement, naturally, just our energy, our presence alone is going to put that energy on front street. And it's not by like exposing anybody or anything like that. It's just that the energy we carry is so authentic that anything that's fraudulent kind of shrivels in our presence. Right. right. I always wondered how Scorpio is next to Libra because, you know, Scorpio is very authentic, yeah. you know, and they're very like, you like, they're not really trying to put on a persona like that. We got Libra, they're a little bit the opposite. You know, they, they kind of care about being there for people. So sometimes they can put on a, a more uninvolved Libra can do that. They can put on a persona. And we see this a lot, uh, you know, in the world today. And I just wonder how, you know, I think about those things. <laughs> well, <laughs> those things. From an astrological standpoint, um, you want to look at it like, okay, Libra is balancing both masculine and feminine energy, right? Mm -hmm. Balancing yeah. both. Where Gemini is both, Libra's trying to balance both. Okay. Now you have Scorpio that has the two energies and it's like, what of the two needs to be done away with what a, what is now that we have this androgyny type of energy going on what part of this can we shed purge and let go because you know scorpios will rule over the genitalia people hear that and think about just sex but they release weight from the body too your genitalia releases fluids like you piss you shit so what needs to be done away with yeah what do we yeah. let go of and so that's where Scorpio comes in. As with Libra, Libra is trying to balance multiple sides and energies. And Scorpio is like, okay, we can balance it, but we gotta offload some of what is on these scales. Let's get rid. Let's knock some shit off the scales. There's too much stuff up here, basically. Right, and I also hear uh, from a lot of a lot of astrologers in the conscious community that Pluto is one of the most misunderstood planets, along with Neptune. Like everybody can understand. Everything in astrology, your first house, second house, third house, all the way down to the seventh house. But when they get to the eighth house, they're like, damn, this eighth house is very confusing. People have a, a very hard time understanding that house. They also have a very a hard time understanding the twelfth house, which is the house that governs Pisces. And it's kind of interesting how the eighth house and the twelfth house both deal with secrets. They both deal with unknown. They both deal with like things you can't really see. Um, well, that's because so, people are using mm -hmm. these two eyes and not their third eye. Um, that's part of why they have issues and trouble in these houses. To understand either one of those houses, you're going to have to use your third eye. Mm, mm, okay. Mm. So people, people who have a lot of Pluto energy during this time, or Scorpio energy, what are they going to experience during this period? I would say a leveling up and a transformation of like who's in their circles. Um, you know, they're normally connected to like the movers and the shakers and the political figures, people who's in high places. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's going to change and evolve where they see this shift and they see this change, even with, um, you know, some of their friends and stuff being empowered and doing the work, change of circles. There's even going to be a new definition of what power looks like. That's another mm -hmm. thing that's evolved. Ooh, uh, I never thought about that. Yeah, because Pluto does go power, and it also deals with intensity. So does that bring? Does you feel like you've seen a lot more intensity within the conscious community? I feel it, and I've seen mm. it. Yes, yes. Mm. Because some people are. Um, I'm seeing it. In my opinion, it's more cutthroat right now. It's, it's, it's more. more authentic, it's more authentic and raw, but also more cutthroat. Cutthroat. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that. Wow, wow. Mm, mm, mm. So during this period, what is the best thing to do for just for the just for everybody watching? What's the best thing to do? Stop putting all your business online. Take your big three out your bio. <laughs> 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 when somebody knows your big three, they can read your entire birth chart if they know astrology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was telling people cool. no, no, no for real. It's not. Yeah, 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 yeah. We were, we, you know, I definitely made a tweet about that uh, not too long ago saying that yeah. it's, called, it's called reverse psychology, that people can definitely do that. Like, if you get somebody your right sign, you're telling your sun sign, you're telling your moon sign, bro, now they have to do just guess those three and just go on astrosuite.com and now find your whole natal chart 
and now they can see your life. You know, they don't even have to go on astro seek if there's somebody who knows astrology. Once they know your rising sign, then they know that your descendant's gonna sit opposite. Then all they have to figure out is what house your son is in. Then from there, if they know your age and where you're from, they'll know what transits is going on during that time. You can look it up. Oh, yeah. So they don't need to know your moon sign. Mm -mm. Just I tell people leave that if you're gonna tell somebody your sign, your sun sign is fine. But when you start talking moon and rising, wrap that the fuck up. They don't need to know all those details. Oh, Reason yeah. is this. Moon is things that need to be revealed, things that are not public, things that are private, okay, things that are hidden. We see the moon win at night, okay, mm. one of those trances where she's out in the day. Um, mm. That's your ancestry. So when you mm. tell them people how you manifest your magic, if it's somebody who knows astrology, now they know what kind of like ancestors are working with you and supporting you. Not that you're ashamed of your ancestors, but if it's someone who doesn't like you, they know how to counter how you're cleansing yourself off spiritually, mm. how you're manifesting for yourself. And it's like, people may think that it's a joke right now, but like, there's just a lot of privacy. Everything does not need to be online with Aquarius being the internet. Um, your kids don't need to be on the internet. You do not need to have your app. Like, with city you live in, like, people <laughs> think it's a stream, and it's not. I promise you, it's not. But like, was Yes, you was talking. You was talking about evil lies, about the evil okay. eyes going through the roof. Groups, because Pluto is still like jealousy, envy, and then Aquarius is groups. So there's going to be different covens, secret societies that are essentially siphoning energy from people. Especially if you have like a large platform, or if you're someone who, even if your platform is smaller, but if you can go online and when you speak to people. Like they awaken and it stirs something up inside them. It, you have a target on your back. And it's like, at least they know the better. Like, let your work speak for you and not you speak for you. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's that's very that's very interesting because and you don't even recommend people to share their spouses. No. Their boyfriend, girlfriend, keep it all private. Keep it all yeah. private. It, 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 it's true that people could really like like you post your, your man or your girl and people could really make y'all make y'all have arguments i heard yeah like you okay we'll, we'll just give an example there's been times where like say we knew a couple they was a happy couple they get a reality mm -hmm. show the minute they get this reality show you hear about them divorcing or separating shortly thereafter why because now, vibrationally, you have had other people's energy intersected in their union who are giving their opinions, feedback, suggestions. And even oh. if the two people are not taking it in, vibrationally, energetically, you two people and those are millions of people weighing on you. And unless you're taking the time to cleanse that off spiritually, which a lot of them are not, then it's going to impact your union naturally. Right, right. At that point, it's not even a relationship because the relationship is two people. When you have about a thousand people inside of it, it makes right. it more of a group. <laughs> it does. And it's the same thing if you were to put that relationship online. You know, I've, I've in the community that I work in, I know that there's people who will see people, kids, and screenshot them, people, significant others, and screenshot them. So even if, you know, you're not posting them a lot, people will look for that information, screenshot it, and print the picture out and do spell work and different things. And you just don't need that. Enjoy your life. Enjoy your blessings. This is not a time to be like blossoming because a lot of the world is hurting. A lot of people are going through a reset with, Scorp with Scorpio energy being that of like a rebirth. So Pluto has reset a lot of people's lives while it's in Aquarius. Yeah. So a lot of people may not have the same status they once had, or they may be fighting for their life, their livelihood and survival mode, property consciousness. And so it's not that you can't have nice things, but it shouldn't be the focal point of your discussions. And this isn't fear because Pluto can be fear. This is just the cautious energy. Be mindful. Okay. Be more intentional. Don't just be, you know, thinking shit sweet because it's not. It might be for you, but for the collective, it may not be, depending on right, which right. part of the collective it is. Because I honestly believe that there's going to be a, a divide in the caste system. Um, there is definitely going to be like the have and have not energy. And baby, they trying to make it really hard for those who are a have not. And it's, 
being a half ain't gonna even be monetary all the time. Do you know magic? Do you practice magic? Do you know how to tap into your own power? Then if so, you'll be a half. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's that's interesting because you know. Did, now, let me ask you this question: Do you feel like it's gonna affect Aquarius's on a drastic level, like Aquarius's who are Aquarius moons, Aquarius risings? Yes, Aquarius, Aquarius placements. Period. Um, as some as an Aquarius sun with an Aquarius stellium, absolutely, I see it already, and we just getting started. So I can only imagine what the next twenty three years gonna look like. Um, we've never had a time like this before. We had the technologies, rites of passages, and energies accessible and available to us. So a lot of it is going to be so brand new and stuff we've never experienced before. A lot of people with Aquarius placements will be like ushering this energy onto the planet. You'll also see it with people who have 11th house placements, people who also have, um, I would say, Scorpio placements, 8th house placements as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and I want you to, Tamisha, to go in again why it's important not to tell people their birth chart or a lot about their astrology. What can people do? I mean, it's, it's your spiritual social. So if somebody has this information and they don't like you, they can, if they're really good at magic, they'll know when to close your roads. They will know when to block opportunities that are coming for you. They will know where you have like your weak spots, blind spots, like <laughs> it's just very intentional. Like unless you trust somebody with your life, they don't need your birth card information. Mm -hmm. Okay. At one point, I was definitely seeing people post it on their Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole you know, everything. Mars sign, the Molly. What, what's the uh, the con of sharing your Mars sign? Well, if you're in a spiritual war, because Mars can be work, it can be sexual energy, creation energy, but it equally is still the planet of warfare. So if you're in the middle of a spiritual war battle, which there's a lot of that on the Internet, just because people are jealous of other people getting work and being able to feed themselves from their spiritual gifts and abilities, um, you can then somebody can know how to move around you as an opponent in the war. So it's like, do you want to win the war? Or do you want to win the battle? Like, you have to choose your battles and don't be mm -hmm. battling yourself about whether or not you need to share these details with the world for what? Not a lot of what we're sharing needs to stop with Pluto and Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. while it's retrograde, we'll be retrograde until October. And throughout the 23 year period, it will go retrograde a few more times. Mm -hmm. So, do you feel like? Pluto landing on a eight universal year, it was that a, that was definitely intentional. Of course, because that's its number. Pluto is the oh, Pluto world is oh. eighth house, the shadow house, as growth, the snake that eats its own tail, that regeneration energy. Yeah, world, yeah. leveling up, rebirth, wolf, all of these things, and so the only way that this energy can really manifest in its totality is if it goes up and if it goes down and then it loops right back around. So it's a it's very intentional. Eight can also be a karmic number and Saturn's number. And you know, Aquarius is a Saturn world sign. So there's just it's not it hasn't been an easy year for people, but if you learn how to manipulate energy and matter, it can be this you can have the time of your life, honestly. Because Aquarius allows us to jump timelines too. So if you're yeah. somebody who knows how to work with frequency, yeah, you know, with sound waves, you can easily jump to a timeline where you're already having more flavor, of uh, more uh, favorable experience. Okay. Yeah, I was definitely thinking about that too. How when you think about Pluto, and you think about Scorpio, Pluto does deal with regeneration, and how that's why Scorpio is considered the most powerful sign because that regeneration aspect is powerful. Like the ability to go through something really traumatic. And the ability for them to regenerate mentally and even physically sometimes is crazy. I'll say this. A Pluto ruled sign and a Saturn ruled sign is never going to be where you left them. So even if you took everything away from them, I've seen these signs be thrown to the wolves and come out leading the pack. So they they just know how to get it out the mud, get it how they live. Like, that's them. What and about um, a Mars rule sign like Aries? 
it's not that Mars rule signs don't have that capability, but depending on the level of work they've done on themselves, they may be too hot to make those moves in silence. An Aquarius can move in silence. A Scorpio can move in silence. But Aries are going to be a little bit more sporadic. Like yeah. the energy is normally so hot that it's hard to contain. Not saying it can't be contained. It's just a little bit more challenging to contain it because it's a very mm. impulsive energy. Fire rarely is ever is still. Fire is movement. It's action. Hmm. Hmm. Right. You way you explain it, it's pretty good. You know, this is a good show we have. Make sure you guys go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. You guys are enjoying it. You know, we're only just in the middle of it, and you know, she's going in. She's going in about this Pluto in uh, Aquarius. It's also a transference of wealth, so like pulling back a lot of resources that belong to the collective. So you know people who didn't get reparations but are able to get grants and pull from other funding that belongs to us. And I always tell people just because they're calling in the grant doesn't mean it's not a reparation. Um, if they were to say, hey, we have reparations, people would trip over each other, run and flock to go get it. But when you say, hey, we have this grant available, then people get a little hesitant, a little intimidated, a little scared. They may be too scared to apply or even look into it. But there's grants particularly for minorities and people of color that go all the way up into the millions. And that's why, because there's a transference of wealth from the blood, sweat, tears, and equity energy that our ancestors had to invest in this land that was stolen from us. And mm. on a karmic level, a lot of rewards are going to be back distributed to us, but we have to go claim them because Pluto is still power at the end of mm -hmm. the day. Now, question: Aquarius. I want you to talk about Aquarius. Why? Yes. Why is Aquarius so important during this time? Like, we know we know that Aquarius is dealing with like the collective, dealing with mm -hmm. huge social platforms, dealing with you know spirituality sometimes, dealing with the, the future. For that very reason, because with Aquarius being able to see into the future. Because we are not water signs, we're an air sign that rules frequency and energy conduits. So we can easily shift the collective to a timeline where things have manifested, where there's power, where there's enough wealth for everybody, where people can live in their purpose safely, where people can have fun, enjoy life. We mm. know how to do that and we can do it with even perceived limitations because Aquarius is a sign of rebellion so you're not going to be able to tell us oh we can't do this because this law or this rule is this we don't care about none of that shit we have our yeah. own law we got universal law we don't give a fuck about a man-made law <laughs> I almost forgot you was an Aquarius <laughs> but shout out all the Aquarius watching you know you guys it's your time I always say yeah. it's your time and like it's like Capricorn, they have a huge duty. Like Saturn kind of gives like that duty effect, but yes. Aquarius is covered by Saturn, so they can also feel that a duty. Like they have like a duty to kind of help people, help the collective, and that means if even if you have one Aquarius placement, you're gonna feel like you have a duty to do something in this lifetime. Especially depending on what house is in. So if it's mm -hmm. in the first house, you know that's helping people authentically show up as themselves without needing to like code switch or anything like that if it's in the second house which is the first house is identity so id and mm -hmm. an entity figuring out how you you know I show up your yeah. alien parts the parts of you that are foreign <laughs> the parts of you that are different and mm. not being upset or worried or scared of it second house money house okay what innovative ways can you be making money off the internet passive incomes with ai with digital art um, with the collective for yourself, passion projects, side hustles, all of those things. If it's the third house, that's the house of communication. It's the house of siblings, your community, social media. So how are you working with your community? What kind of events are you having? What are you working on that's going to impact your community and uplift it in a positive way? Fourth house is the house of the home and its ancestry. So are you Want to get these resources that are available and bringing them back to your bloodline and to your lineage and setting up generational wealth. Fifth house is creation. 
Um, what are you building? What are you creating that didn't already exist in the world and making the world a better place, leaving it better than what you found it? Sixth house, the house of health. Um, what innovative, creative ways have you gotten healthy? Is it a workout routine? Is it a regimen? Is it a certain meal? Is it a recipe? Is it a vitamin? Is it all mm. the above? Mm. All of that. Seventh house would be relationships. So what progressive forward thinking ideas do you have about relationships? You know, you know, if it's not 50-50, is it 75 25? Is it 100 100? Like, which, what do you offer in a relationship space mm -hmm. that's, so, that's so different? Do you allow your partner to be an individual outside of you? Mm -hmm. They have autonomy over themselves, but love them just the same because you're experiencing them. You don't own them. Very Aquarian concept. Eighth house, the house of power, the underworld, other people's resources. So, are you utilizing like grants? Or are you utilizing the resources that are available that you inherited through spiritual inheritance? Mm -hmm. This is about inheritance so people forget that depending on what zodiac sign is there, it would also be spiritual inheritance. So if you got Aquarius in the eighth house, that means you spiritually inherited astrology secrets that you're not going to find in the book. You're just going to be able to tap into that pulsation, that frequency, and just get the downloads telepathically that you need to share. Ninth house is the house of higher consciousness, higher learning, universal energy, plant medicine. So what kind of healing are you providing to the collective through plant medicine when it's not abused, when it's used in a real way? How has plant medicine evolved? Are you creating your own type of plant medicine? Are you crossbreeding plants? All of these types of innovative forward thinking ideas, if it's a 10th house career in business, Okay, what kind of changes are you bringing into the corporate space? Mm -hmm. We all know corporate America could be toxic as hell. But if you're your own CEO, what kind of corporate environment do you create for your employees? Is it one of safety with an open door policy where they have room to share their ideas and get credit for them and work together as a team versus against each other? All of these different like concepts are even... You know, creating jobs that never existed before, too, because with Aquarius energy is in the future. So they bring back a lot of downloads and information from other timelines that we don't have on the existing timeline, which brings us to Aquarius's house, the 11th house. So these are people who are seen in the public. They're going to be in the public eye. Um, they're going to have a mass influence on what we're doing in the world and how the world shifts and pivots and moves forward. Um, how we commune, how we come together as a group, as a collective, but also astrology. So what kind of changes are we going to make in astrology? Are they going to become more archetypes? Are the archetypes going to evolve? Because some of these archetypes are from older timelines and older stories. It doesn't necessarily resonate with where we're going. And then lastly, the 12th house, spirituality, hidden enemies. Um, that's that Aquarius telepathy. That's something big. As well as communicating with the cosmos and the other realms and galaxies and the planets and being an indigo child, like all of that thing is going to come to the forefront. So, there's a few ways in which how that area can show up in the different houses. So, you if you feel like eleventh house is the public is like I know what it was with like like the collective, but you feel like it's the public reputation. Absolutely. Okay, so it's similar to the, to the tenth house. How they say that's, like. that's that's some of that Saturn energy being seen in both houses. Mm, okay, so, so they're very similar. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, the, I'm glad to. It's mainly like think of Capricorn's house, the tenth house, more of like your prestige and your reputation when you're at work, when you are, you know, in business. Eleventh house is everywhere. So we're talking about at school. You know, if you're at a party, like just when you're with your friends, anytime you like are social media, I would say third house is social media, but of course, mm -hmm. it's the internet. So, just the internet at large. So, you're not limited to just social media. That could be your website, that could be your vlog, mm -hmm. that could be, you know, all of these other social media and internet sites. It's not just social media. Mm -hmm. Also, did hear uh, Tamisha. You was telling me that you're a shamanic astrology. Mm -hmm. um, so, what's what makes that different from my average tropical astrology? Um, and no shade to the tropical girlies. Um, I just do things from a perspective of a melanated indigenous woman. So, there's certain ceremonies I've been through. My ancestors revealed things to me through prayer, meditation. 
and it may not necessarily be in a book. And then people be like, oh, it resonates, but I've never heard that before because it's old information. It's not information that's accessible all the time. Um, as well as I don't really do the whole doomsday astrology. Like I'll give you a prophecy or a warning, but I'm going to tell you how to counter it or what you could do, or how to manifest with the energy. Um, that's how my clients from 2020 to now have manifested the 8.5 million accounting that they've manifested because I don't take like their circumstances and be like, oh, you just doomed and this is the worst thing ever. I'd be like, let's take a look at your birth chart and how we can change this, how we can shift this. Like what medicine is in your chart? What magic is in your chart? What medicine and magic is in your bloodline? And are you tapping into it and how do you activate it? And so because I'm taking that approach to astrology, it's more solution based and solution oriented. Okay. Helping people kind of quote towards their destiny. Uh, that's what's going to differentiate me from the, you know, mm -hmm. other right. Right. Yeah. I like, I love how they always say scientists, you know, Millionaire study science, but you know, billionaire study astrology. So yeah. astrology is if you know how to utilize it properly, you can use it to utilize yourself a financial stable life. That's a fact. Absolutely. And it's so many ways you can do it. It's so many ways you can do it. Um, so moving forward, Pluto, is it true that Pluto does deal with wealth? Absolutely. It's mm, true so, wealthy planet. So is it, other so, people's money, other people's resources on top mm, of that, of other people's money. Mm, because you're talking Scorpio energy, you sexy, right? So magnetism, allure. How do you draw them in with that intensity, not repel them or turn them off? How do you make them flock to you with that intensity and you play on that? And you utilize that to sell your product, sell your service, um, connect with people who can get you in the rooms that you're supposed to be in, sitting at the tables you're supposed to sit at, or since it is Aquarius now, creating the rooms, creating the tables, creating the buildings, owning the buildings. So it's a very important time that we're in. Yeah, yeah. So for all, you know, how, what do you recommend, you know, for all the people who are public figures, you know, what's the message for the haters? Like, what do they do to the haters who are watching them? <laughs> Baby, make it look good. Make them drool. Like, do they hate you? Do they hate that they love you? Like, really <laughs> look good. Be excited. Smile. Have fun with it. That's what I would say. Life right. is already heavy in certain ways. So it's like really being mindful of being mindful of why they even hate you in the first place, right? So I would say. Sometimes as an Aquarius or personal Scorpio placements, I've noticed people just hate the fact that you know how to transmute circumstances. Like, oh, if that was me, I would have died. Or if that was me, I would have crashed and burned. If that was me, I would have gave up. Okay, but you're not me. <laughs> you're not built like me. So, right. You know, yourself to be as strong and as powerful as you are. And for those who are not, let them be motivated and inspired by it. Because a hater ain't nothing but a confused fan anyway. They're mm. just in admiration that you're doing something that they don't know how to do. And sometimes because of the way society was previously built, instead of somebody saying, you know, I, I, I'm having a hard time. And you seem to be like, you kind of got a handle on life. Like, you have any like feedback or can you help me? We made it to where it's kind of like humiliating to say that versus that being awarded or applauded and so people become haters and really they just confused confused admirers they love you more than anything they just hate that they do that's that's powerful that's powerful and um you know i'm 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 grateful we're having this this show because you know we both are you know life out savings and you know we we are into astrology into studying science because i heard that astrology is the science to is our science and they took our science and they took our astrology but that's really the melanated science and that's why i'm grateful that that's the science. Come together yeah and, and give it out to the collective and you know there's a lot of people watching who are quite who have quiz energy pisces energy shut all the pisces you know she's you know she's in the quiz i'm a pisces so we we you know collab and bringing the the neptune conjunct Aquarius, a neptune conjunct uranus energy you know so, um, is there anything else you want to go into? Um, I would just say before 
anybody else can empower you, empower yourself. Okay, so a lot of the times when it comes to being Aquarius and we're in this Aquarius age overall, right? Aquarius is normally ahead of the curve. So normally something Aquarius is doing, people of discovery and think it's cool 15 years later, but Aquarius is doing that shit 15 years ago. So if you're doing something right now, it could be in terms of business. It can be a passion project. It could be an idea that you have. Go ahead and act on it. Don't wait until like people give you their feedback or their approval or they say it's cool or it's a good idea validate yourself let god be all the validation that you need if you got that idea if you got that download if you got that synchronicity it was for a reason so go ahead and move forward with it and don't tell anybody about it until it's complete so pluto is yeah. show and not tell now i know oh, yeah. it's an air sign but don't get it misconstrued show not tell let the work speak for itself let your energy speak for you. So you know how they'll say, oh, your reputation precedes you. Let your energy precede you. No, I didn't even think about that because Scorpio is, it does deal with that. It does deal with always protecting your manifestation, always doing it first before not telling anybody. And I learned that from Master Finesse. He always said, like, you notice how Scorpios, they, when they manifest something, they tell nobody because they don't trust nobody. So then they'll wait till it's done and then show them. And that way I put it on a quiz. Quiz deals with the public. And it's basically that scorpionic energy inside of the public. So using that Scorpio energy onto the public and not showing everybody your every move. And I heard Brother Yosef also talking about that too. Like hand is that old school, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Everything is not for everybody because even some of the people that you think would be happy for you or not. And even since Pluto has been in Aquarius this short amount of time, I've actually had some shifts and pivots in my friend group already for that very reason. People that I wow. thought were happy that certain things were taking off and manifesting for me. And the minute it did, that jealousy, that envy, red is ugly little head that had been sitting there all along, but it like it's retrograde too right now. So you know with retrograde things are going to be revealed because the retrograde <laughs> is just not going to let things be hidden and go unseen. It was a lot of energies, you know, Pluto retrograde in Aquarius forming a conjunction with the full moon retrograde in Aquarius and the moon is hitting stuff. So like hidden resentment and animosity in some aspects came to the surface for people. And um, again, we're going to get to a place though where people can, admit they're struggling in that another person may have more strength in another area and like hey how can i empower myself the way you're empowering yourself but that's going to come in time it's not going to happen overnight because right now people still have a negative connotation and perception of power at times it's like you want it but then you're not supposed to right that's kind of the way that power is mm. because right. it's just been people who've misconstrued and used it in a harsh way over the years. So it's like the find what power is for you and be that. Yeah. Do you also want to go into that celebrity? I mean, we can, we've seen some things with the celebrities, but you know, Aquarius the opposite Leo and Leo's a celebrity. So I would say in the age of Aquarius, you're going to continue to see celebrity culture dwindle out. Like you can even see that. <sighs> celebrities have been getting to other areas and other streams of income outside of just like entertainment out of singing beyond theater beyond acting reason being a lot of them are broke a lot of them are broke yeah like broke. like um with for instance like diddy and him being in atlanta there's a lot of atlanta rappers that are going through it right now um you know and uh, Atlanta is a city that has a lot of uh, glorif glorified energies being very glorified and targeted among most cities. And that's why it's like, hey, if you in Atlanta, really be mindful. Really be mindful of who you're around. When I think around. of Atlanta, I think of like magicians, right? I mm -hmm. think of the magi. I think of the magicians. And I say that because Atlanta, Atlantis. Mm -hmm. So that whole fake it until you make it, um, it's a lot of illusions in Atlanta. It's a lot of illusions and it's encouraged and it's supported. But if you know how to see beyond that, then you can actually meet some very talented, dope, creative, innovative 
like movers and shakers, thought leaders, and change agents in Atlanta. Right. But you yeah. gotta be willing to like shuffle through the fluff stuff. Mm -hmm. Like a needle in a haystack type of energy. Mm hmm Yep. That's that's interesting. Pluto and Aquarius. And uh when is this, when is the retrograde in again? Oh good lord. <laughs> it is set to end, I believe, uh let me get the exact dates. Okay. I believe it's the end of the month, and then um, we have the two-week post-shadow period. So, so what's harder? Yes, uh, okay, so August 28th, and then we'll be in a post-shadow period until September 11th. What's harder? Um, yeah, Pluto retrograde or Mercury, Mercury retrograde? Oh, well, uh, Pluto, and I'll say why, because Mercury is, Mercury retrograde really just trying to help. To be honest, and people wouldn't look at it that way because they're used to doomsday astrology. Mercury. What is, what is what is doomsday astrology? If you mind me asking. Doomsday astrology is the astrology that be like, oh, it's Mercury retrograde, all hell finna break loose. Da -da -da. When at the end of the day, Mercury, the art symbol, is health and healing. So, if we didn't have these three times a year to slow down, to rest. To rejuvenate, to revisit, to recharge, we never would. On our own, we never would. We'll just go on to the next thing. Something is left undone. Something is left unsaid. Something is left unfinished. Something is left unhealed, most importantly. So Mercury is really there to heal and to help. But remember, people don't like medicine. It may taste bad going down, but then when you feel better and you're healthy, then you appreciate the medicine. But initially, people don't even, you know like the fact that you're sick or to acknowledge that whatever that sickness may manifest as right right yeah mercury is one of the things that deals with technology too and i notice people will say cars break down their phone breaks down mm -hmm. their computer breaks down and it's, it's like this the only way that's really happening though is keep in mind mercury only doing this if the phone the computer the car was already needing to be repaired it's, it don't always just be like, just because it's Mercury retrograde, it's going to go out. Mm. So it's like, okay, if that phone got a cracked screen, we'll replace the screen so the entire screen don't go black. If that computer needs a new battery, I can <laughs> replace the battery so that the whole computer just don't go out. Okay. Car needs the oil change. Go get the oil change so you don't got to replace the motor. Like, it's that kind of energy. Like, okay. Mercury to be a little bit more proactive versus reactive. And so, you know, when it comes to our technology, our communications, our business deals, let's be proactive about it before we actually, you know, go retrograde and the details and the circumstances may shift, change, or pivot. Um, I would say with Pluto retrograde, the reason why it's harder, don't nobody want to do no damn shadow work. Right. Now, you a person who got Saturn and Pluto placements, and I would even say Venus. You got to do it anyway. Right. You got to yeah. do it anyway, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but that don't mean nobody want to do it. So with yeah. Pluto, some people would rather die because Pluto is also death than face pain, face yeah. pain, face the hardship. And so what makes Pluto challenging is that people never really – Except sometimes that the power, the blessings, is really on the side of all of that. Like, if, you ever seen that um, meme where it's like the guy who was digging, and he was digging, and he was digging, and when he gave up, he was like probably one more dig away from the diamond? Yeah. That's that's some Saturn-Pluto type shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I like to think of Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen the movie, but Deadpool and Wolverine. I haven't seen it yet. Yeah, they know. Hey, but check this out. They know how to regenerate. You know, they have something called a healing factor, which is a Marvel basically way of healing really fast. And if you shoot them, they ain't dying. They can't even really die, you know. And that's how I think of Scorpio energy or Pluto energy. They know how to do that on a mental level if they're evolved. And this is why, you know, they're known and regarded as, you know, one of the most powerful signs because if you can't really hurt somebody if they know how to somebody know how to alchemize energy you're dealing with somebody who's already very powerful that means that uh, you can throw them negative energy and they can somehow make it positive make you know, it you can, um, mm -hmm. you, what'd you go say 
yeah, they know how to make it work to their benefit, not their detriment. Right, right. So it's like, and I believe there's other signs that can do it a little bit, like like Pisces can do it. Um, and the water knows how to transmute a little bit as well. But um, I do believe uh, Scorpio knows how to do it probably the best. Um, and that's one of the mm -hmm. gifts. Well, what what other signs would you would you say that can that can transmute energy really well besides Scorpio? On your on your from your research and your learning. Um, I would say Aquarius. I would say surprisingly Libra and Capricorn. Oh, Libra, Libra. Okay, I did hear this. You know, uh, one person told me that Libras are magicians uh, because they do a balance, and balance is like one of the most powerful things in the world. If you can balance out, like you know, if you have a pendulum, right? If you swing the pendulum, if it goes too high to the left, that means something really good happens in your life something really bad happens. So you're really supposed to like not get too happy, not get too mad. You're really supposed to just be in the middle to prevent the other things from happening. And they said balance is that. That's why they say divine balance, my, you know, the justice system. And they say Libras have the closest connection to balance. Mm -hmm. They are. There's already a kind of balance. Um, let me see. When it comes to alchemy, who else would I say really good with alchemy and transmutation? Mm hmm. Mm. I'm just going through the zodiac in my mind. I'm just mm. Mm. no, that's about it. <laughs> and at first, I wasn't understanding. I was like, "How is Libra Saturn rule? Like that makes no sense to me whatsoever." But when you think about how much work it takes to still show up and be personable, diplomatic, fair. While you dealing with a lot of other people, their wants, their needs, their desires, their insecurities, and then you got to try to balance this out for multiple mm, people. That's powerful. So pretty doing it. That's that's powerful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Libra got it like that. They do. Yeah, I realized that because at first I was like, I'm not getting how Libra is connected to Saturn. I don't get it. And then even as yeah. a doctor, I didn't get it. But then. Right. You know, I talked to the planets. I talked and to the species that ooh. are associated with each planet. And they was like, well, think about it. Having to be pretty after balancing everybody else's stuff. Because you remember yeah, on those scales, awful. one scale is shadow and one scale is light. So you balancing this within multiple people and in the midst of that, still maintaining your own essence, your own energy, your own aura. That's what makes Libra exalted in Saturn. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people think my thing like Libras are people pleasers and this and that, but I've seen a lot of Libras that they will fight. They they, they have an anger to them. The, the opposite is, the opposite sister sign of them is Aries. Right. Is pure divine chaos. So Libras will... I've seen Libras, like, they, they put their hands up. <laughs> I've actually you know, seen Libras be more cutthroat than Aries. You want me to yeah, it's, it's, it's really like, it, it just depends if you get them I've to that seen side. Them, like, fly and scheme and scam where i've seen aries like aries want to get it over with get to the point like they right. don't got all that <laughs> yeah yeah Lib libras are always going to be one of the signs that are going to be talked about most because you know they are an air sign and they're ruled by venus so it's just like they're going to be among like one of the most you know likable signs but then people going to have their strong opinions on you know libra but then the, it's crazy because they deal with social intelligence so a lot of libras are like they're good at being lawyers so they can really have good discernment on everything in life like they're really good at discerning everything when it comes to seeing both sides of the situation which is interesting because gemini does the same thing the gemini can see both sides of the situation while libra does the same thing which i always find out to be interesting they're both air signs yeah they're slightly different in the sense gemini is both sides so mm -hmm. that's why people be like, Gemini's are light. Which one were you talking to? Do you know if you were talking to the shadow twin or the light twin? Mm -hmm. They're two they're two different people. And depending mm -hmm. on the situation, they may even ping pong. Like one may show up for one part of the situation, then another may show up for the other side of the situation. And so Libra is trying to balance light and dark energy duality. And then Gemini's like, no, baby, I'm both. Like, depending on which way you pull up on me, you're going to get either one. Yeah, wow. Because yeah. Gemini is a mirror. So what are they mirroring to you? Is Gemini mirroring your shadow? Is it mirroring your light? That's the yeah. part 
the people don't talk about, they'll go, Gemini is two faces. What is Gemini mirroring to you at this time? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it is the, the Gemini energy, like from my personal experience of being around them, it, sometimes it's like I have some of the best conversations with them. It's only if you talk, have longer conversations with them, you might start to see their moodiness come out or their other side come out. You won't really see the other twin come out immediately. It just this yeah. is when it's like those those three hour conversations where you might see the twin come out. I don't like oh yeah, shoot. they have to trust yeah. the person. First. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Because Gemini's can be very like friendly. That you got it in with them. That's not necessarily true. They they they're not Aquarius, so they're not the sign of friendship. But they have a more like jovial, upbeat disposition about them majority of the time. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. So for you, have you seen anything since Pluto's been in Aquarius? Anything yeah, so out? Some of the things I've seen since. When did it start? What what month? Um, it's been March. It went back and forth. So it went into. It went into Aquarius and then went back in Capricorn and now it's back in Aquarius. It did a little ping pong because Pluto wasn't done with us in Capricorn for a while. <laughs> okay. It basically was like, no, let me tidy up some loose ends first. So it started really around last year around what? Um, it started in January. Oh, January, okay. Like it went, it, it, it started a little bit somewhat and then it went back and then it went back and it went back. Yeah, back. so some of the things I've seen, I've seen a lot of high profile um, spiritual leaders go through a lot of change in our platforms whether it's like, you know, their personal life going through a lot of transformation and people judging them for this or that. I've seen a lot of that. I've seen, um, I think, you know, uh, a lot of controversy. People just finding who they really are. That's what it is too. Like, some of us are still like, now you hit our Saturn return. So if you didn't hear your Saturn return, you're still going to be kind of like going through like the trial and error stage and kind of like the shits and still figuring out who you are. Wh where do you fit in here? You know, and that's what, you know, Aquarius deals with. So like finding <laughs> Aquarius is known to not really fit in or, you know, so finding where you fit in, what group do you fit in? Do you fit in the spiritual conscious people? Do you fit in where the, the, the rap community, do you fit in the gaming community? Like what, if you don't fit in the community, where do you fit in? Do you, do you do not fit in? So, like, I see and a lot of that too. Creating community too. So, if you don't fit in, are you willing to go band and link up with your fellow weirdos and outcasts and misfits? Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. Like, just, but, um, I see people also not really caring about what people don't like about what people think. Like what a lot of people say that because, like, I think of Megan Thee Stallion, how they called her a snake so many times, and now she's just embodying a snake persona. But you know, one of Pluto's animal totems is that of a snake, and Megan is an Aquarius, so she's like, Okay, they're gonna call me a snake this many times, I'm just gonna make my new persona that of a snake. Mm. So, the new project has a complete snake theme, yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting, but yeah, people really not really caring about too much about what people think because now people just in their like freedom area was like man it's like you gotta be yourself you know you're going older you gotta be yourself and like you gotta you gotta just do what you gotta do nowadays and, and follow your mission teach keep teaching keep teaching keep teaching and um yeah but networking is also like i've, I've have seen a, a surge in networking um their networking has changed in a lot of uh platforms i've, I've been seeing um the way they do it, and yeah, those are some of the main things I've been seeing. I've been seeing the collective changing a lot as well. People questioning a lot, um, mm -hmm. the people they follow, um, which is good. You know, you should always question the people you follow. Um, yes, you I've been should. seeing people uh, change within people. Are, like some people are firing with being an introvert right now. Like people are like man, like being an introvert, being alone is like. Like I don't have nothing to lose. <laughs> I don't have nobody. To lose. <laughs> so being alone is just like, yeah. So, yep. Very powerful. Very powerful period right now that we're in. Yes, and I mean the pandemic started during the age of Aquarius, so they kind of got us scared to be around each other. But there is magic within groups when the magic is used for good and utilized properly, and that everybody in the group knows their role and knows their part. 
but the Pluto part of it of still being able to retreat to oneself and take time to oneself and be content within your own company, within your own cipher is going to be important too, equally. Mm. Time and a place for everything. Aquarius is time. Time is ended with it. So where where people wherever people have Aquarius in their natal chart tells them where that Pluto power will affect them. Mm -hmm. Where they can start jumping timelines, where they can start attracting financial opportunities, where they can like level up and find people that they connect with in that area. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's powerful. This day and age is uh, it's the time. But without further ado, um, you know, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. You know, we give thanks to everybody who's watching this show with uh, Beyond Five D and Tamisha Monet. Thank you so much, uh, Tamisha. Do you wanna give your socials for people to follow you? Yes, I am at I am Tamisha Monet on Instagram, and I am Tamisha Monet seven 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 three seven on TikTok. And uh, yes, that's where you can find me. Okay. Yeah, so you guys who want another episode, make sure you guys go ahead, like, comment, subscribe. Me and Tamisha will make another episode. Whatever you guys want, just comment it down below and feel free to just share it out. Because at the end of the day, we're doing this for you guys. We just want to really give out collective podcasts and you know, share out new, you know, conscious radio like energy to the to the world, you know. Cause somebody has to do it, somebody has to give out some type of independent media, and this is a the goal for us, all right? So, without further ado, guys, we love you guys. I say, Thank you, mm -hmm. love y'all, be powerful, yeah.